Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Hughes, I am the Lord of Leisure, and welcome to another Aftermath video where you actually join me in Leicester Square, where currently the BFI London Film Festival 2018 is currently taking place. Now, obviously, various people are going to watch various films over the next week or so. Um, some big, some small, some weird, some wonderful, and I have just watched a film called Mandy, starring Nicolas Cage and Bill Duke and a whole, co a whole cast of other uh, people in what I only, I, I honestly can only describe this film as an absolute clusterfuck. I genuinely don't know what the fuck it was I was watching most of the time. Um, <laughs> it's... It, look, I, I, I have to say uh, immediately, uh, I, I, I do have to talk about what kind of plot there is in, in Mandy. I'm going to try and steer away, uh, clear of some spoilers, but um, this is an independent film where cinematography and like still image and, you know, what the, the audio and visual senses, that, that's the most important thing. And then it's the senseless, uh, over-the-top violence, uh, uh, which involves chainsaws, uh, handcrafted uh, axe, scythe, weird metal guitar type thing. I honestly don't know, uh, frankly. I don't know the best way to describe it. I'm sorry. It's just... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> uh, I, I will. I, I film stuff out of the way first, I guess. Um, it it has a very vi uh, very color palette. Uh, the soundtrack is a mixture of and then rock uh, anthem type things uh, for various moments. Um, make no mistake, the makers of Mandy which effectively is a hyper-violent film uh, with Sir Nicolas Cage. He should be knighted after uh, some of this. I mean, he doesn't have many nines in the film. I will say that, but... It, okay. For those of you who watched Face Off when he had various, um, shall we say, facial expressions, you get some of the good ones in this. So you, you're going to get your money's worth if you're looking for pure Nicolas Cage going... Yeah, it's seriously, you, you really are. Um, but there, don't expect anything for the first sort of half an hour while I, I suppose the sort of plot kind of gets um, borne out so that then you've got the reason for all the mayhem and silliness that comes afterwards. Um, how much it will make sense, I, within the world that they establish in the film, yeah, in some ways, it, it does make absolute sense. In, in normal... Uh, I, I, I don't know. In, in every other conceivable form, no, it really doesn't make any sense. It, it's, just a, it's just a WTF, permanently, all the way through, uh, pretty much. Because it, it's one of those films where everyone acts completely strangely, like everyone's going for like seven minutes or, or at a time or, or things like that when you know various things happen in the background um, so the plot as much as I think I know from the film is that uh, Nicolas Cage plays someone who is supposed who, whose character is supposed to be named something else but basically it's Nicolas Cage on possibly an off day uh, you know, when he's a bit tired or, you know, upset. I, I don't... <laughs> Sorry, it's it's kind of weird. I can't describe it any other way, but it's just it was crazy. Um, he's living with a lovely lady who is sort of out there going sometimes as well, reading a book, wearing rock uh, t-shirts, and it's set during 1983, so you've got an awful lot of with some of the music and the, the soundtrack, I couldn't escape Stranger Things because it's clearly uh, some of that what they're going for uh, with this. But in essence, they're living by themselves. Nicolas Cage is 
uh, a lumberjack effectively chopping trees down for all of two seconds before then getting in a helicopter and then just uh, that's that's the last time uh, he does any of that um, his uh, lady friend partner wife I honestly don't know um, works in a shop and then along comes some Jesus botherous slash drug addicts on, I guess, LSD? Or at least a bad batch of LSD. Uh, they come along, um, driving in a van. They spot Nicolas Cage's uh, lady friend slash partner slash whatever. And obviously want to do various naughty things uh, to her. So she's kidnapped with the aid of some demonic bastards. I don't know what other way to describe them. They just randomly come out of somewhere when one of um, the former rock star lead slash leader of the Jesus Botherers slash sufferers of this LSD thing pulls out what only I could describe as a conch and he just goes and then they come out of nowhere on quad bikes because why not? Uh, and they they uh, get hold of uh, Nicolas Cage's uh, girlfriend, uh, he, Nicolas Cage gets knocked out, and various other things happen. To wit, I, I do actually have to warn, there is some strobe lighting, but there is also a flaccid penis uh, on show. So if you're not in the mood for obviously seeing that, and seeing a woman laugh at it uh, as well, then um, this film is definitely not going to be for you. <laughs> I wish I was joking. <laughs> um, in essence, you okay? Things go bad. The lady friend uh, is no longer with us, and thus that gives uh, Nicholas Cage the excuse to go off on one in every shape or form. I mean, he turns out to be a blacksmith as well, fashioning this axe scythe thing, which, yeah, why not? And then he goes on a killing spree, making sure he gets rid of absolutely everyone and everything that was involved in his lady friend's death. And that's pretty much the rest of the film. It, it doesn't matter. There's a random tiger at some point. There's some other weird shit. And a lot of gory violence, along with some moments that... I'm not sure if they were supposed to be funny, but you can't help but laugh out loud. It's... How do I... It's a film that definitely you have to see it to believe that they did it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said, um, uh, before, the, the, the director, the, you know, the cinematography, everything, they go full fucking force with what they're trying to do. And once you throw any semblance of trying to make sense out of this world or where they live in and you know, what's happening in 1983, um, just go with it as a ride. You, I, it's definitely going to be hit and miss as to what you think coming out the other side because either you're on board with the weird shit or you're not. If you're not on board with the weird shit, you definitely are not going to enjoy this. Um, but if you are, like, unfortunately, what I seem to definitely be, you're going to have a... Once you get past the kind of slow setting and melancholy that uh, sets everything up, after that, then you just go, yeah, okay, boop -a -doop -a -doop, what's next? Oh yeah, that guy's dead. Oh dear. Uh, oh dear. Axe shoved down guy's uh, throat. You know, Ooh, he's gonna leave, he's gonna be left with a sore throat after that. Um, and it's just a straightforward. You know, uh, if it were a computer game, it'd be just a series of boss battles all the way through with Nicolas Cage, with various, uh, shall we say. Um, Weapon, weapons at his disposal, like a crossbow, his axe slash scythe thing that kind of looks like a rock guitar uh, as well. And I have to say, the, the scene with Bill Duke and Nicolas Cage as well is actually the best because it has some of the best funny lines. Like, uh, I, made the, I made these arrows 
they'll go through bone like uh, a fat kid goes through cake. You just can't, I know that that's spoiling the joke. Just in the context of the scene and everything else, you can't help but laugh your ass off. Um, do I think this is going to be a classic? I suspect it's, still, it's definitely gonna get a cult following um, because of how fucking strange slash weird uh, it, it is. But if you're willing to suspend some sensibilities about yourself and just sit down and just expect a load of weird shit to start with, but then some funny slash really, really gory bits come in. And it's not like, it's not, I would say, horrible or otherwise. It's just, it's just over the top for being over the top sake. Oh, and, uh, you know, there's animated dream sequences. Uh, so, you, so, yay! Um, <laughs> yeah, it, the closest thing I could equate this to is kind of like someone's idea of a rock opera type thing where he goes through hell and back and whatever else and in the end you just go, yeah, okay, that happened. <laughs> so, Mandy, uh, I, I genuinely don't know how best to recommend this uh, to your fine selves who may find yourselves uh, with a couple of quid in your pocket going, hang on, I'm in the mood for seeing some uh, silly shit, what's on the pictures? Would I say go and watch Mandy? I would say if you're uh, the type of person who is willing to suspend any sense of disbelief and just go along with a, a ride, fully knowing ahead of time you're going to see some just strange shit and potentially see some really vivid imagery, colors, uh, and also definitely a striking soundtrack, along with various uh, Nicolas Cage grins, gurns, and hyper-violence. Um, yeah, uh, I can certainly say there are worse t uh, ways to spend your time, but this is by no means going to uh, be one of those films for everyone, far from it. This is going to be one of those cult following films at best, but fucking hell. Um, maybe go with some friends as well, because, you know, maybe for an idiot like me who gets to just like pontificate uh, to a smartphone while everyone else wanders around uh, in Leicester Square, could just get the stuff uh, out. This is definitely going to be a film that gets you talking afterwards, and maybe that, that maybe that's it. That's 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 what it is. It's it's a fucking weird one. <laughs> but let it not be said that I have not come out with a smile on my face and somewhat a little bit of disbelief out of what I just watched. Would I would I watch this again? I think it's too soon to say. I don't know. I've not fully processed what I've just watched yet. Um, for yourselves out there, there are two. You, you could see it on the limited cinema, uh, cinema release, or you might just end up waiting for this on Netflix. It's not a. It's kind of how much you want to go and watch something that it could be construed as a beautiful clusterfuck. Honestly. I think that's the best way I can describe this, because that, 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 I can, my words are failing me. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just... <laughs> Mandy, a beautiful clusterfuck. They should put that on the poster, uh, maybe. Which is all bloodied with Nicholas Cage in, in any case. But, uh, yeah. Oh, dear. So, they, I would say watch it if you are in the mood definitely for something different because this is definitely different. It's weird, it's bloody, it's it's definitely not everyone's cup of tea. But if you're you're in the mood for some weird indie shit, they go full belt with it and you know what? I have come out entertained, if nothing else. So just down alone, if that sounds like your shit, Go and watch Mandy where you can. If it doesn't, then by all means, walk away. Completely, I understand that mentality. 
Anyway, campers, right. After all that, I'm gonna go home and uh, I think just stare at something in disbelief for about half an hour. Um, I've been Paul Hughes, I'm the Lord of Leisure, and for me here in Leicester Square at the BFI uh, Film Festival uh, 2018, until next time, bye!